Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. One of the uh, things I've seen that people like most about my channel is the DLSS versus FSR comparisons. And let me start by saying that I do think that DLSS is superior to FSR. However, I do think also that when FSR is well implemented, there is not that much difference to make sometimes depending on the resolution, of course, because what we are going to be testing today is 4K, okay? 4K native, again, 4K DLSS and 4K FSR using the highest preset that the games allow or the lowest preset, depending how you see it, which is either performance or ultra performance. And the reason for that is to take these technologies to the limits because I feel that I, if you are able to rec reconstruct an image from 720p or 1080p to 80% of perceived quality at 4K, I think that's amazing. And I really love this sort of technology because that, you know, makes me like, wow, this is very, very incredible to see something. And you're going to see some things that are really like magic. I'm going to show you later. But also another one um, is not here in the first set with, with Starfield for different reasons, but we are also going to compare it with the resolution from where the game is reconstructing natively okay so we can see how this whole technology is able to bring that black magic to bring that amazing 4k quality either dlss or fsr and we are going to see that fsr needs a good implementation but it also will depends a lot on the game itself the quality of the game because that also will determine how good or bad fsr is in the game but starting with starfield which is you know, and also many of you have asked that show the performance. So we can see here the 4K native is around 70 FPS, while FSR and DLSS is around 90. Even though the, this first frame you see here is only 82, it trace blow and depending on the scene. They are, you know, it's not exactly. I tried to mimic the scene as best as I could, so to make the comparison as fair as possible. And also, of course, there is going to be movement because some people say that the games break completely when we are in movement. So in this case, we're going to be moving, okay? Not just static images. So as you can see here, first things first, if we get close, very close to this, uh, other than some difference in lightning, uh, light problem, I don't see anything here that really screams the FSR is bad compared to the native. This game has a very particular image quality, soft image, but in this game, in this case, it works in its favor with any of the technologies. Remember, we're using ultra performance, okay? So that means it's 50% on each axis. That means that we are reconstructing from uh, uh, 1080p in this case, I believe, okay? So as you can see here, everything is quite good. It looks quite decent. It's a little bit softer, the image in this case, a little bit, but I think it's still, you know, it's quite good considering that our performance is going from 80 FPS in the, up to 110, 111. So we are gaining a lot of performance with just a little bit of image degradation. And as you can see, even on the finest details, like in this antenna, what's funny here is that if you see here, this antenna is barely visible here, has almost completely disappeared here, but you can see some of it on the LSS. Um, and here, you can see this antenna here, it flickers a little bit on all of three. Look at this. Okay, you can see it flickering. Not a big issue. Of course, there are fine details, so that's good. Uh, look at this. Uh, even here, there is a little, uh, I am doing some movement. Yes, it's slow movement, but there is movement there. And you can see that you, we can see the details of this basket in all three uh, images, no problems. Of course, the native is only, it's always going to use everything. So we can see here that this is going to flicker a little bit, even on native, so that's okay. And then here we have this little fence on the back that I think the best reconstructed version is the DLSS one, but as you can see, it looks back on three or on all of them. So yeah, well, I think DLSS is doing a good job and even FSR is showing a little bit more than even the native image is at the moment. So all of them are doing a great job here. And I will say that it kind of flickers back and forth, but as you can see, they both are showing. But yeah, DLSS is a little bit better here. Um, then we got these details and you can see here, okay? But they are flickering. You can see a little bit more is better reconstructed here, but nothing much either. So I think all three, all two reconstruction images look good enough. No issues whatsoever, at least from my point of view. We can see some of the 
most, uh, far details here. This is very good. However, there is one issue with DLSS in this game in here. And you can see here, like in this reflection or something, as you can see, it's very pixelated for some reason. And when we move, you can see that, that movement that is only visible from certain angles on DLSS, which is not available on FSR or native. So that's quite a weird one. So yeah, this is ultra performance. I'm moving a little bit faster just to try to find any issues and we find some weird movement here, but again, nothing, you know, major, nothing problematic. We can go here and uh, you look at this fishing net on the back. It looks well on all three of the images. So yeah, once again, we're going from uh, ultra performance to here, but the important thing is that we are getting this much performance and the image degradation is very minimal. However, as I said, this is for Starfield. We're going to see other examples because obviously each game is completely different and implementations also. But as you can see here, I could not say I will complain if I was playing with this sort of quality. So I am wondering why the images on consoles doesn't look as good as this. I've seen some games being reconstructed that really, really look bad, which have, I think it has to do with the game, the engine, because Unreal doesn't seem to like FSR that much. Uh, uh, Immortal of Avem, we have seen that well, but here, I, I don't know. Yes, this is much better, um, but I wouldn't say that it's, you, you know, like light years ahead. If you can play 4K native, fine, but in here, uh, you know, I will be losing a lot of performance, as you can see there. So um, we can go even to a split screen from native to DLSS and do this. Um, yeah, the, the difference is... This is really not there. Now we can compare FSR and DLSS. And yeah, I think they both look quite as well. So yeah, no issues for me here. This is Starfield. I'll come with the next comparison. Okay, and for our next test, I have Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. And the reason for that is because I believe it's one of the games with the best FSR implementation that I have seen. However, not everybody um, agrees with me. Alex from Digital Foundry told me that he doesn't think so, he thinks it's very bad and so on. And well, I respect his opinion, but in my eyes, this implementation is very good. And they, uh, Ubisoft even recently patched the FSR to make it more stable. So uh, yeah, I don't know, I've been testing it for a while and I'm actually very um, impressed with it, with it. But you know, I respect each opinion and he may have his reasons. Uh, but it's not mine. Okay, so just to let you know that I do think this is a very good implementation And as you can see performance wise, we are gaining a lot from going to native to DLSS uh, Performance that we are using the performance here and here also FSR performance and this is the native 1080p So you can see that the performance is very close in here, but what about image quality? Okay, so image quality this game is quite weird. It has some it's strange difference that I am going to show you, especially in areas like this. So as you can see here, there is a lot of noise and shimmering in movement in the 4K native for some reason. I, I'm not able to explain what's going on. And of course, the DLSS is going to present that on the FSR2 because they are trying, you know, to reconstruct starting from that 1080p image. 1080p image that, as you can see here, native doesn't seem to be showing the same kind of noise in here. So that's quite weird. And here you can see some ghosting. Um, but I am not sure if this ghosting is because of DLSS or is because of this noise that is generated by the game. But we don't have a 1080p. It's quite a strange uh, thing here. But it, it, the rest of it, I will say, is quite good. Image quality, it, it looks decent enough. Uh, if here we can make an, another thing. The, the thing I, I, I always say that impressed me about this technology is that when you try even an ultra performance or performance modes, it's that the image uh, could reconstruct the looks more closely than, to the 4K than it is to the original image, which in this case is 1080p. So if you see here, this 1080p image is very mm, fuzzy, it's a very blurry. You can make here the, the, the um, individual strains that makes the grass, but you can here and here, even on FSR, compared to the 4K native. As you can see here, look at that. 
right? You can see and you can make here, it's impossible to make anything out of this. You know there is some sort of vegetation, but nobody's going to tell me they understand exactly what's going on, but we can here. So you see the difference that I'm trying to make here? And this is why I believe this technology is so great, so amazing, because you know, we go from 1080p to something that is so much better and, you know, and the performance, look at this, we are going from 28 FPS to 74 FPS. That's more than double, almost three times as much. And even 1080p is not that far ahead. So if you had to choose between 1080p native and 4K ultra performance, considering the uh, performance that we are seeing here, which one would you choose? I have it clear. I would play all day with 4K, um, even if I had a monitor that doesn't support 4K, because then you can do down sampling, and it's still probably going to look better than 80 than the 1080p native. Okay, so okay, let's keep watching this um, and the comparisons, and, and you're going to see another areas that are quite interesting. For example, this one. Oh, I think I went a little bit further away. Uh, let me go back a little bit. So what I'm trying here to show is that you can make up this area here very easily, but you cannot here. You cannot differentiate exactly uh, how much um, of those holes are in there, right? Let's get to the far. You can see here, look at this and look how clean this looks compared to this one. This is a blob and here you can make a little bit of here. It's a little bit better here. Of course, 4K native is better, but the performance is not. So, okay, let's continue because there is an, oh, this one is quite interesting. Let me move it a little bit because you can see here that we can sort of read it here. You, we can still read it here, wrong con def, and here is a little bit no worse, but still we can make some letters, but nobody will say that this is letters. They will all, everyone say, well, it's some kind of logo or something happening there, but I can't see letters at all in here. <laughs> Do you see the, what my point is or what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so this game is weird in the way it, you know, everything's made because as you can see here, this is noisy. It's not noisy here or here or even here. It's, I don't know, it's a, it's a weird way the games present the graphics, but they are beautiful, I can tell you that. And here, there is a lot of more details that I was saying before. And once again, the performance, look at this, is so great, so beautiful. Um, so, yeah, I think, I, I think... This is another show that comes how much it improved a perceived resolution going from such low uh, start up to 4K. And it's always closer to 4K than it is to 1080p, which from my point of view is exactly what we want and why I love this technology. Okay, so now we are going to continue with Avatar, but with the third part of the benchmark. And that's just because I believe this area is quite busy and there is, you know, lots of things going on so we can kind of see the difference. So I have to say that in this particular area, I don't see that big of a difference between all the images. Evidently, the 1080p is softer. Um, but, you know, between the 4K and the DLSS and FSR, I think all three looks very, very good. So I'm not quite sure why people think the implementation of uh, FSR in Avatar is so bad. I don't see it as bad. I don't know. Um, I, even while playing, eh? I, I know I'm testing this benchmark because it's easier. It's exactly the same position. But I have to say that I don't see any big issues. As you can see here, you know, 4K, it looks like this here and here. And obviously 1080p is going to be less detailed, less. But, um, you know, I, I don't think it's a big issue, big problem. I, I actually see that the maybe because of the way the game is presented or so on, it still looks quite decent. Um, look, I, I don't see as much as I get close to it and everything. I don't see such a big difference as to, you know, consider it bad. Now I have restarted. So, yeah, there is not much to say, to be honest here. I think all implementations are great. Um, yeah, let's test the next game. Okay, and if you know my channel, you should know that you were not going to get rid of Dying Light 2 as a test. <laughs> and that's because I really love the options that this game provides for me and for testing benchmark and so on. So as you can see here, well, you know, 4K native, 4K DLSS, 4K FSR performance both, and then 1080p native here, just to compare how much you can see. And uh, well, it's clear that FSR and DLSS are looking quite good and that 1080p, as you cannot even see what this is here, you know, you know what it is, you, you, you cannot understand what it is, but you cannot make it the, uh, you know, 
uh, individual strain. So, well, we have that to begin with. So 1080p, and we have this here too. If we go here, look, this is more of the same, you know? So yeah, that's something. Now, here, once again, the biggest problem you can see from FSR is the disocclusion and the shimmering that it creates pixelization in some areas. But of course you're asking, okay, but what about performance? Well, you can see here 53 for the 90, 120 and 118 for uh, the 4K uh, DLSS performance and FSR performance and 138 at this precise point for 1080p native. So yeah, <laughs> you know, um, I think it's a, there is quite a big difference. We can see more details in here. You know, the 1080p image looks soft, a lot softer, you know, lots of detail loss and so on. Um, but let's continue because there are some other areas that we can compare. Um, so, for example, this area here, you can see that the fine details from this um, bridge on the top, you can make it in native DLSS, but not so much on FSR and especially at 1080p native. So the fact that we can go from something like this to something like this by not losing that much performance when you consider 140 FPS on 1080p and 120 on DLSS performance on FSR means that, yeah, we're getting quite a good deal if you ask me. You know, you can make some letters here, but nothing here. So, yeah, that's quite good. Uh, I will say, look at this, uh, look at this. I use this in my Spanish uh, channel to make the example. You cannot make out what it says here, but you can do it in the other three. Um, so that means, as, as I said, as, that yeah, this is improving a lot in, in terms of resolution and clarity. The only thing is that, as you can see, every time there is a little bit of movement, the FSR looks kind of a little bit like ghost and that's um, and DLSS is a little bit better but this is the native one but as you can see 1080p is a complete blob you see what I mean so here we have more comp more areas of comparisons as you can see not much difference DLSS seems to be more complete but not that much uh, as always uh, the um, 1080p is more um, on it's less detail. Now, the question is, would you prefer to play a 1080p native for those 138 FPS or play a 4K performance and still have 120 plus FPS? I have my answer, guys. I don't know what you think. Look at this area to here. This is complete. And as you can see here, there is some areas missing and same as 1080p. So, and you can see this here is more complete on FSR and the LSS. So another win for both technologies, if you ask me. Continuing with Dying Light 2 in this area. Well, you know, we can go back here. There is, you know, you can see the logo perfectly fine where you can. I will even dare to say that it seems to be like a different logo or something. It's quite strange. Don't you think the way this looks at 1080p? Um, that's super weird, uh, but you know, in terms of clarity and everything else, the LSS and FSR are doing fantastic jobs compared to 4K native, and of course, much better than 1080p. Here you can see some shimmering here in the area of the windows, as you can see on FSR, which is not as prominent on the LSS. I would say almost it's not existence, but it's there, of course, but it looks so much better. And that's another problem with the uh, FSR, the shimmering. So, but you can see here that we are getting still a lot more detail than we're getting at 1080p, where we can even make this. So it seems like the, the, the texture is so damaged that we see something completely different, but we can still make some details of the roof on the LSS and some on FSR, but nothing on 1080p. So once again, definitely uh, the DLSS and FSR images look better, except for these problems here where there is little fine details moving that are causing shimmering that is not present or not as present. Even on the 1080p presentation uh, on the DLSS, reconstruction is a lot more stable. Here we have well some more um, examples, some more movement. As you can see, performance as always is quite good on both. Um, yeah, there is not much to say on this particular area here. Let's wait. 
um, it's quite slow. I don't know. This it doesn't use GPU acceleration when it comes to this. Now here, here is something I want to show you that I think is amazing. Look at this. Look at this. Let's move a little bit. Look at this and why I think this technology is like black magic. Look at the pumpkin sign. It's you cannot make the details or even read it, but you can do that on the LSS performance reconstruction on both cases. Look at how good the logo looks compared to 1080p. Look here, this is just a blob. It's just so, you know, 1080p is not showing you all the details. So what would, what would you prefer, honestly, to play a 1080p native? In this case, what well, you can do the same and have better quality using the LSS performance at 4K. Look at this, for example. You see that old Metro logo. You can make it out that this is an M. You cannot make it here. Of course, you know what it is because of the logo itself, which is white on a red background. But you cannot make the letter itself. It's a Metro station. It's a hotel. You know, it's... <laughs> It's not clear, but you can make it out on the 4K versions of the game. And I think that's what's important about it. It's just about the general clarity that you get with these technologies. So now I'm going to show you the last game where I saw the biggest difference in each one of the cases. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so the last game I'm going to be testing today is Horizon Forbidden West, okay? Um, before I started this, and this was the first game I actually tested, I was trying to make sure that what I'm going to say or do here is correct. So um, I'm using the Ultra Performance preset, just taking this to the max. And I, it's my knowledge that if you use Ultra Performance, the internal resolution is going to be 720p when you're upscaling to 4K. So in this case, as you can see here, um, we, I have the 720p native image, then the 4K Ultra Performance DLSS, 4K Ultra Performance FSR, and the 4K native image image okay so that's the first thing and we're going to see some things that are going to show you some of the you know disadvantage or advantage of using the lss and fsr uh, uh, in terms of performance this is the game that gave me the least amount of performance gain as you can see here the native went at 90 and ultra performance 130 fps so only around 40 fps more compared to the other games i believe they the reason for that is because the other game used uh, ray tracing, which obviously means that by lo lowering the resolution, it's going to need less um, rays to um, trace. But even so, I think that, you know, considering everything, this game, even a 720p and 4K, there's not too much difference, I will say, considering that we have like eight times less pixels at 720p that we have at 4K. So yeah, it's kind of weird, the performance of this game in that sense. However, I try to synchronize this work as much as I could. It was not easy. So uh, let's let's see and um, let's uh, talk about some of the findings. So here I want to start just, just starting by showing the problems with FSR that are part of FSR and why the implementation in games like Avatar, Dying Light 2 and Starfield is so good and different when it comes to those games and this. And the biggest difference is that those are first person games and this one is a third person game. And what happens is exactly this. So you see the disocclusion problem? This is what I've been saying for a while. FSR has a big disocclusion issue that is not so evident in first person game because normally you don't have anything like in first, you know, in your area of view or normally the enemies are a little bit far. But in Mortal of Aveon, for example, the biggest problem was, for example, changing the weapon because you have the weapon showing on the screen and moving fast, creating this issue. And when it's so prominent on the front, it, it, it's unavoidable to look at the image and think, oh, there is something wrong here. And you can see it here. Look at all the pixelization that is happening around everything on Aloy that is moving. Look how bad it is. And this is the latest version of the game. So it has nothing to do with any patch or anything. This is the problem. And you can see this in many other third party games like Jedi Survivor or even Spider-Man. So this is a big issue that um, FSR has not been able to solve, which I hope that FSR 3.1, I believe is called, do solve, but unfortunately it's still not out and it's going to 
going to be out for like uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. So let's see what happens with that. But anyway, here you can see 720p native image is a very, very blurry. You can see that the, while you can make the individual leaves on the trees on each one of the, the other images, you cannot do that at the 720p image. OK, so let's keep going and watch. So you can see uh, some of the things I'm, uh, 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 I've been trying to show and um, why I think this is sort of like black magic and I love it so much and I know some people don't well for those people that's your problem uh, I do love this technology because I think you know that it, it gives you a lot back in terms of image quality and performance you see here we have 85 but we can get up to 135 of course I wouldn't play probably an ultra performance I don't need to because I'm already getting 85 a 4k native but I can use it still DLSS quality and still get quite good image um, without sacrificing uh, or going so low but depending on the game I can go to performance um, if I still get good image quality so as you can see here well you know we have this issue I'm going to show you something interesting and uh, the moment we get to this little bridge here I, I think it ended up being very well um, uh, synchronized um, I, I thought it was going to be worse but okay so as you can see here Look at this, for example. We can make the 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 we can make this. You can make the details of, of the um core. I don't remember the name of this thing in English. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, so, but we can make details. Even at, in FSR, you can see some of the details that are made here. However, you can't see any of those details at 720p. And even look at the rock on the background. It's all like a big, big blob. You can see an individual like pieces of grass and everything here is just a blob. It's a big blob. So the fact that you can go from an image like this to something like this, for me, is mind blowing. Because yes, FSR, FSR and DLSS Ultra Performance as, are not as good as 4K native. But you're getting like 80% of that, but by getting a lot more like performance, you know, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, I think the sacrifice is worth it. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. But well, okay. Just, um, if we keep, you know, looking at this, um, you, you can stop this anytime you want to keep look at this, how here is just, you know, just a blurry mess. Like I put Vaseline on top of the camera or the monitor or something is really really blurry you can make details and you know even though fsr is a it's a mess because honestly it is with a third person when you forget about this and you look like at the background it's not as perfect as the lss or obviously the 4k native but it's much better than the 720p image from where it's coming from now if it didn't have all this this occlusion shimmering pixelization issues that not only happens on alloy that is important to understand okay because you're going to get that even on anything that is moving but the thing is that because it's on your periphery vision you're not going to pay that more attention to that but you are going to pay a lot of attention to what is in the middle and in this case it's alloy which is looking looking like a mess but anyway my point is look at this this is like black magic, okay? And this is why I love this technology so much. We are getting, look at the performance, 80, 116, 119. So we're getting a lot of performance, okay? Losing just a little bit of clarity in this case. Um, look at this, and we are coming from this. So for me, that is honestly quite of impressive. I, I honestly, I like to do these comparisons because it impresses me how much you can improve the image with this technology. I know some people say that, the, uh, you know, um, this is being used for games that are not optimized in the sense that instead of optimizing the game, they rely on this to gain that performance, which in some cases it could be true. But the thing is that for a very well optimized game that you have these options on top of that, you're gaining so much. For example, on this uh, Horizon Forbidden West, you can play with DLLA. DL I can play with DLLA uh, and I still get amazing performance. I can get ultra quality i can get quality and still get amazing performance amazing image quality so uh, yeah it depends on the game of course but look at this this would you play like this or would you play like this or even like this honestly tell me which one would you play if you had to choose between these three things of course you're going to say probably dlss but if you had to choose between fsr and 720p which one do you think you will like better you know this is a 
I, I think I will go with the FSR, even with all the problems that it, it is. I think there is more clarity, more quality, and there is a lot more you can do. So it's clear, DLSS is much better. FSR has issues that needs to be solved if it wants to compete. But in some cases, it can be a very good option, especially on first person game. So yeah, that's what I think uh, about this. This is uh, probably the latest compar the last comparison I'm going to do in a while, unless you come with a, a very interesting idea. Just tell me on the comments if what you would like to see next. I try to, uh, you know, do all the comparisons you asked me, show you the performance and everything. And because when we look at this image from the normal um, distance and resolution, as you can see, uh, 720p still looks bad. FSR, it looks decent enough. DLSS for me is almost as 4K, very close to it, but we have so much performance gain. So thank you very much. And as always, see you on the next video.